Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fast Forward Amy Show, the show where we talk about how you can lift your life and business with simple strategies. I'm Fast Forward Amy, your host and coach, and I'll bring you a new episode every Tuesday. Whether you know it or not, as a student, as an adult, as an offline or online person, you have a personal brand. And today we're going to be talking about how you can increase the value of your personal brand without a budget or existing network. I'm going to teach you how you can build a valuable network from scratch and how you can make a name for yourself without having a website or an offer in place. Today is episode 80 of the Fast Forward Amy Show, and that means we are nearing that 100 episode mark. I should really start planning for a party or something. It means that you can grab all of the show notes from this uh, episode, so the recap of everything we're talking about through fastforwardamy.com forward slash 80. We do that because we know you might be walking, working out, cooking, and so that you don't have to take all of the notes, but just know that you can always just read the recap in the article. It will only take you a few minutes and we link everything in there that you need. Because I also have a surprise for you and you can find it through that link or just in the description of this episode. Namely, um, I'm hosting a webinar. It's called Design Your Online Business. And it's gonna be all about how you can stack your income of your online business, about the products that you can uh, put in place in your online business and the prices for those products. I'm gonna teach you all of my own methods that I haven't taught anywhere else. So definitely make sure you grab a seat. The webinar is worth 200 euros, but you can grab it for free because you're a listener of my podcast. If you simply go to fastforwardamy.com forward slash design OBW. So design online business webinar, design OBW. And the link is linked in the description as always. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I got you, gotta let you in on a little secret. You have something in your possession, something incredibly valuable, something that can make you millions of euros or dollars, something that can reach people all over the world. Your name. Del Carnegie said it first, your name is your most valuable position. And unfortunately, many of us kind of overlook that fact. Uh, I remember starting out as a, um, when I started out with my personal brand, I totally underestimated how much value uh, was attached to a name. And if you actually spend time on building up your name, on becoming an authentic, becoming an authentic authority, that can really give you a lot of, uh, how should I say it? Not just revenue, but a lot of results later down in your life. Um, it's widely underestimated how much you can achieve, not just with your face, but just with the value of your name. And I thought it would be fun to just look at a few ways that you can start today as a student or someone without a budget, without a lot of time or without an existing network to see how you can start building it up regardless. And one of the first things I, I, I was thinking about, like, okay, so if I would start all over again, if I would be back in university, for example, I know that I would have spent my time a little bit differently. Back when I was in university, I was always working. I was always working. I was almost never partying. And although that got me to where I am today and having a successful business at 28, it also um, I also wasted some opportunities there of connecting more with my fellow students because maybe, and I hope this doesn't come across harshly, but maybe I wasn't as interested in my peers back then because I felt like I was more mature or older or further ahead business-wise. Later in my life, they will be at the same level or at other different positions in different companies that are interesting or just overall interesting people. <laughs> um, and it might be a little bit of a shame that I never connected with them. Oh, that was a whole sentence. <laughs> so what I want to say is I wish I would have spent some more time at university actually talking to everyone in my class. But the first time I was sitting in a really big aula, I was actually mostly just very overwhelmed by how many people were there. At 18, 19, you are so insecure about yourself. Whereas if I would go to a conference right now, I would probably just talk to everyone there and connect with them and exchange numbers and names and add them on Facebook. Whereas back then you're kind of like, what are they thinking about? But newsflash, everyone is just thinking about themselves. So if I would go back to that place, I would use my Facebook profile and my Instagram to spread my message, and I did it back then. I shared a lot of fitness articles on my um, on my Facebook profile, even though I didn't have my own website yet. I was always just sharing stuff I was interested in, and I built quite a name like that. But 
I should have connected more with people. Uh, talking to people in class, sitting next to different people instead of always going to sit next to the same person. So this might apply to you right now in your job, if you're working in a really big company or anywhere else, basically, if you're at an event or at a party, just connect with new people, make connections everywhere you go and actually make sure that you uh, consolidate those connections by adding those people on your Instagram or on your uh, Facebook profile, or maybe you're a LinkedIn person. I personally am not a LinkedIn fan. I think it's very, <laughs> I just don't like using it. Uh, but maybe I'll change my mind someday. I'm currently testing it out by using it more, but I'm just not really a LinkedIn person, probably because I've never really worked in a corporate environment. But as I'm saying this, I'm like, oh shit, maybe I should be using LinkedIn because I'm kind of defying my own laws now. So yeah, okay, I will be spending more time on LinkedIn. I also learn from my own podcasts, as you can hear. So uh, yeah, basically put it out there that you have a lot of interests and musings is where I wanted to head towards. I want you to be using your Facebook and your Instagram not to lurk and spy on other people, but to put your own brand out there. And it might be that you don't have a service right now. You don't have a business right now, but you do have a name, you have interests, you have the way your brain works, and I want you to start telling people about it. And it might come across as arrogant, but I guarantee you more people are paying attention than you think. For every like on Facebook, there's probably 20 people who saw it and didn't comment on it, but they are paying attention. And I always remember um, back when I was in university, I was so into reading fitness articles. And as I just said, I was always sharing them. <laughs> I was sharing like three fitness articles a day and because I was reading them, you know? And uh, some of my friends thought it was really annoying. They were like, what are you doing? You're being so out there on Facebook. Uh, and at a certain point I thought, well, you know what? No one is liking them, no one is commenting, so I might as well just stop posting those articles. I didn't have my own website yet, by the way. And uh, at a certain point, I was sitting in class and I was in a really small uh, class in, in my um, year because I studied business engineering, but the department I was in was just a really tiny class. We were like 20, 30 people. And I remember one of the guys um, telling me, hey, Amy, why haven't you been sharing your articles lately? Because I was always saving them to this folder and I really liked them. And I remember just being flabbergasted. And I was like, you read those? And he said, yeah, it's a shame you're not sharing them anymore. And I told him, well, if you read them, why won't you ever like them? And that's when it hit me. A lot more people are paying attention than you think. So you should use your free platforms to your advantage and build up a name. Why should you do that? Well, you might not know it, but for example, I've been noticing this um, hiring people. So we've been building up our team and you get a lot of resumes in. And I don't really care about what people did at school. Like, yeah, there's a baseline of things you uh, want to have accomplished. I want people to, uh, you know, have some skill sets, but I'm especially interested in what their online activity looks like. Also because I'm coming from like an online marketing company or like online e-learning company. I know we do so many things, but I really care about people's social presence. So I will go and look up people's social presence and I will go and see like, do they know how marketing works? Do they know how online marketing works? Social media profiles. For me, that is especially important as well as just other extracurricular activities, because that tells me someone has the ambition to work on something and make it a success. So starting a blog at a young age, doing a project, uh, volunteering somewhere, all of the extracurricular stuff that adds value to your name is more valuable than you think. And people are paying attention to different things that you do and have put out there than you might think. So basically I think you can't overshare yourself. Now I don't mean share every salad you eat every day on your Instagram or on your Facebook, but if you have an interesting part in your brain, which I am assuming you have, <laughs> share it. You like articles, share the articles. Do you like something in politics? Share it. Be opinionated, share your musings, uh, share snaps of your lifestyle because people are watching, more people are watching than you think. Uh, and I think we kind of already covered because I was gonna say, so use the free pl platforms to distinguish yourself was my first tip. But my second tip was actually network like your life depends on it. And I already kind of touched on it, but in class, at events, at parties, for me, at rallies, for example, when I'm somewhere with my dad, we drive competitive rallies and um, usually I am half the age of the average age there, uh, but there are a lot of interesting people there. Most of them are entrepreneurs. They, they're great to talk to, they're 
very interesting. They have a lot of life experience. There's always a ton of stuff that I can learn from them. And also they might benefit me in the future. Now, I don't wanna um, put networking out there as the sleazy term it might sound like. By networking, I really truly mean talk and show sincere interest. Networking for real, literally building a network with people you genuinely connect with and care about. So connect with speakers when you're at an event. So most of the time when you're at an event, people are like, oh, I won't go and talk to the speaker because they'll be busy. But you can be that person who connects with the speaker. You can be the person who um, after the event sends them a DM or a message on LinkedIn and tells them like, hey, I was at that talk. I really appreciated what you said there. What will happen, by the way, I learned that from um, a book, uh, Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi, really good book. I'll link it in the article of, um, of this podcast episode, which you can always find on the website, obviously. Um, he says, just sincerely thank people after a talk because not a lot of people will do that and that will stay with them. And on top of that, I don't know if he said that or if I made this up, <laughs> but on top of that, if then later down the line you need them at some point, you can reach out to them and they will see that a year before or months or years before that you had already reached out with just honest and sincere appreciation without expecting anything. So a good example for this is I wrote, wrote my thesis on um, strategic communication between executives at like a small business level. And there was a person I wanted to interview for my thesis with my thesis partner back then. And it was, well, there were all COO, CEOs of like fairly big, small companies. Um, how do you get to those people? You get to those people through the people you know. That's why they say your network is your net worth. It's all about the people you know. It's also one of the reasons I don't really care for fancy schools and MBAs and all of that stuff, but they are really good for you if you want to build a network. So that's something uh, you can pay to get into those schools and then build up a fancy network with people who will go places because they have a fancy network by themselves. This is coming across fairly weird right now, but think about it. Anyways, I needed to talk to that person and I remember it, I once was at an event where that person spoke and I had sent them a message afterwards. So by the time I realized, hey, I need this person for my thesis, I was able to reach out. They saw our previous conversation or at least my message from like a year before. They were like, yeah, sure, I'll come and talk to you. Humans need appreciation. All of us need it. Your team members need it. Your partner needs it. Your kids need it. Positive feedback, sincere appreciation. So no matter how famous someone is or how far away from you they seem, they will still really appreciate you reaching out to them and telling them you appreciate them. So give it a try. Um, yeah, just connect without needing anything, you know? On top of that, and this is... <laughs> <laughs> what you're gonna not like. Remember what I said in the beginning? I was like, a name is someone's most prized position or most valuable position. It also means that you need to remember people's names. And you can't go at me like, no, but Amy, I'm so bad at remembering names. You can't afford to. Get over yourself. Find tricks to remember names. So one of those could be that when you talk to someone, you will repeat their names. I was like, oh, Thomas, nice to meet you. Thomas, did I say it correctly? If you don't hear someone's name, ask it again. People are always afraid, like, if they didn't catch someone's name to ask it again. But no one minds you asking again if you are pronouncing their name correctly. And if you still didn't catch it after two times or three times of asking it, you can ask him, how do you write it? And then you know for sure <laughs> uh, what their name is. So remember names, actually write them down, preferably in your contacts list on your phone, for example. And if you gather details about those people, write down the facts. I used to do this, I haven't done it in a while, but as I'm saying this, I'm getting inspired. And I think from now on when I am at events, uh, I will go back to writing people's names down. For example, at the rallies I drive, there are so many successful, interesting people. I will write down their names and when they tell me something about their daughter and which university they're going to or about their spouse or about their company, I'm just gonna write it down. You think you only need to write down someone's name in your contact cards once you have their phone number, but that is not correct. You can just write down their name, even just their first name with a description of where you met them and just add in all of the facts that you learned from them. Again, be sincere about it. Don't use this to manipulate people. I hope that ethically, you never use any of the information I give you to be uh, mean to people, um, but you can use it to practice your, your mind, to practice your networking, to practice your 
soft skills. Talking about soft skills, if you've never read it, uh, the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie is a really great book about communication and general people skills. Uh, I'll link it later uh, in the article as well, but it's a really good book. The title is a little bit shady, How to Win Friends and Influence People, but I promise you it's gonna change your life if you learn how to communicate with people better. So what did we discuss? We've talked about using free platforms to over share yourself. Also, by the way, don't forget to show your face. Your personal brand needs a face, which means a face. You also want to network like your life depends on it. And that means talk and show sincere interest to people. And you want to remember names and details and actually write them down. You don't need phone numbers. You need details and facts of people. And then you can always connect with them later down the line more easily. You think you you will remember, you won't write it down. Your brain is not a good office. Just in general, your brain is not a good office. I learned this from someone on my team. So I think that's so valuable. And then last but not least, you know, you want to be helping people. So let's say you don't have a service, you don't have a business set up, but you're like, yeah, you're right, Amy. I want to build a personal brand. I want to set myself up for success later down the line. Well, then if you don't have anything to offer yet of like, like money wise, where there is an exchange, offer your help. Be of value to people, be of service. Offer your time and attention wherever you can. If you have time left over, let's say you're in a job, you're starting out and you're not looking to start your own business yet, but you wanna increase your network, go and volunteer somewhere. Um, attend lectures, attend free lectures, connect with people there. Just try to connect with as many people as possible. By the way, um, if you look at Undercover Billionaire on, uh, I think it's Discovery Channel, you will also see that the three billionaires who will go undercover there and try to build a million dollar valuated business in 90 days, from the moment they arrive in the town where they will have to build that business, they start connecting with everyone, every person in the street, every person in a store, whatever. They just talk to everyone. Your network is your net worth don't forget, okay? Uh, when you are of service and just genuinely wanna be helping people, you will see that there are so many more opportunities than you've been paying attention to. So jump on those opportunities when they present themselves. Whew, that was a whole uh, <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> We talked about how you can uh, build up your personal brand because your name is more valuable than you might have thought of before. And I want you to remember that you have something to offer, namely you. You are unique and you are worth it. So show the world your uniqueness and be of service and start from there. Start with value and the rest will follow, okay? And um, if you're interested in not only building up your personal brand, but you're like, hey, Amy, I'm so inspired. I'm actually pretty good at just like talking to people, connecting with people, and I wanna do more of this online too and build my own online business. I got you because I am hosting a free design your online business webinar. In the design your online business webinar, we're gonna be talking about which income stack you can create in the product suite of your online business, which products you can be offering in that product suite and what to price your offer. So I hope you will be there. Uh, if you want to, to register for your spot, go to fastforwardamy.com forward slash design OBW. So design online business webinar design OBW, or simply click the link in the description to find all of it. And if you are ever confused because I said so many things and linked the books and the resources and all of that, like the TV shows, just go to fastforwardamy.com forward slash 80. We always create a recap article of every episode we record with just the number of the episode after like the backslash of our uh, website name. So in this case, it's fastheartamy.com forward slash 80. And there you can find all of the resources that we just talked about. You have something to offer. That something is you because you are unique. So show the world your uniqueness and be of value. I'm Fast Forward Amy, your host, and maybe hopefully someday also your coach. And uh, I, hope, I hope to see you in the webinar. And uh, yeah, I'll be back next week, Tuesday with a new episode. Have a happy day.